Buenos días. Good morning. In principle, what I'm going to do is to change the chip. I'm not going to talk about recovery, elimination, or recycling solid domestic waste. Although this is waste, but they are not apparently classed in a, the same group. Treatment, we're going to separate, but part of this is the recovery of waste and basically dealing it by categories. So these are preliminary results of the research group from the University of La Laguna. On the one hand, we have an increase in greenhouse gas emissions that is creating problems, climate change problems. And on the other hand, what is increasing, of increasing concern is the increase in waste that we're seeing worldwide and also locally. These two problems, the only thing that happens is going to degrade the environment that is of increasing concern. In my presentation, I want to see what we can, how we can recover energy from this. And this could give rise, on the one hand, to recovering waste, or some of the waste fraction, which will solve the problem of dumping it, and on the other hand, or disposing it. But what we're going to look at here is to obtain renewable energies from waste. This means that we'll, have le we'll be less dependent on oil, and we'll have um, a, a double recovery. Much of the waste can be used in many different ways, um, made into consumer products. But what we're going to do is to focus on energy recovery, nothing else. In general terms, the problem that I mentioned is worse on islands because of the lack of lands. So it's far more difficult to get to dispose of these wastes. So if we want to try and pose a viable solution for a fragmented and small area such as islands, we can organize a pilot in a mainland on the mainland as a standalone solution. So basically what we're going to do is to study the biomass from waste that can be converted into energy and different kinds of fuels or with some consumer products or for food for animals. And what we're going to do, first of all, is to focus on forestry, agriculture and livestock and frying oil waste. The oil is included in solid urban waste, but it has to be treated totally differently. So how can we recover this before we pre-treatment, where it can be used as biofuel in solid pellets or biofuels that vary in their composition? If we go straight to recovering forestry waste, the information from the different island councils gives us a, a general classification of different kinds of waste. For instance, we have pines clearing the pine cones or pine needles. All the, the lectures have shown data for the Canary Islands and more specifically for Tenerife. I could have shown you the data for all of the islands. And we can see that felling pines is we we get the most of our waste from and the data that I will present comes from recovering it throughout the Canary Islands. This waste has to be dried out because 16% of it is moisture which we'll lose when, when we eliminate the water and there's another 3% that is lost in crushing it. So the wood waste that we'll have will be around 389,000 tons a year that can be used either directly to make solid pellets or it can be diverted and treated. The one that we've selected is the most effective one, which is pretreatment with a dissolvent, which gives alkaline hydrolysis. And here we have the, the different stages that we'll find the extractable, about 49,000 tons, hemicellulose 50,000, cellulose 34,000, sorry, and the rest is lignine and ash. The two most valuable products would be hemicellulose and cellulose, which is known as halocellulose. And altogether, we're talking about 
using this with a catalytic reaction which gives us green diesel. This final stage of the process, we don't have any figures for the performance yet, so I'm not going to give you the percentage of the tonnage that we can get out of this in the end. This is, if we're using forestry waste, that was forestry waste, so let's go to agricultural waste now. And these come either from the crops, i.e. the pruning waste that are left in the, on the farm, but there's also waste that might come from the product, from the fruit, either in the distribution or it's in, in its processing. If we look at the production data for these different crops, we put banana, tomato and vines are the ones that leave the most amount of waste. The waste. All the other crops, either there's very little or very few crops or they don't produce a lot of waste. Or it's extensive, so they're grown extensively, so it's very difficult to, to separate and take it to a single site. The data come from the farms, it comes from the Department of Farming, we look at a loss of toma tomato, um, platano and vines, and the remains of the banana is equivalent to the cultivation, whereas the waste from uh, bananas and fruits itself has 15% waste in the cooperatives, in the sales process, and a 13% waste is generated at origin. With regard to tomato, with pruning, there's a loss of 38.5% per, per ton, sorry, 38.5 tons per hectare and 20% waste. With regards to grapevine, we, the waste from pruning is three tons per hectare. Based on data from the Institute, the Canary Island um, Statistics Institute and the Canary Island government, the graph gives us an estimate of the waste that's generated for these three crops in the Canary Islands and for Tenerife. There's an average is taken between 2000 and 2012. If we look at the trend followed by this waste over this period, we can estimate the trend 2015 through to 2020, which will show us that all of this in 2020 would give this waste generation where the tomato, uh, the banana waste, which is the highest produ production of 150,000 tonnes a year of waste, but bear in mind that this waste has between 50 and 70 per cent water. And we also need to look at another side of using this, uh, this ra other than energy, where it could be used for fibre that we heard ye yesterday. This waste, as I said before, both the, veg the plant waste, either from tomato or for um, vines, can be used as a pellets, solid pellets, whereas the banana, banana waste and tomato is used for anaerobic digestion, which will give us biogas. To make biogas, the methane has to have a minimum proportion of about 40 percent, which means that we could recover energy from this waste. But there is a current trend to try and use gas that is not quite as good from an energetic point, an energy point of view, it, i.e. it has a lower methane content, which would be possible. If we use the banana trunks, this will then we'll get a low content of B methane, which will give us bio-DME, because it comes from biotomass, and it is dimethylator. This is consumed every day in gasoline um, and propellant additives, but in recent years, it, it's also been used as fuel, either as liquid LPG, it can be used either as a liquid or as a gas, and as a gas, we could use it as LPG or mixed between LPG and oil. As a liquid, we can leave it as diesel fuel, we mix it with diesel, and we could also replace it for acetylene or replace acetylene. The production data that we have and the, re pr pr the production data can be shown by way of example the amount of biogas that would be generated in the 
the Canary Islands and Tenerife using either uh, banana, which is far left, tomato, mixture of tomato and bananas, bananas and pine needles, which we're showing this because of the production that goes, because pine needles, because of the high content of lignocellulose, which has to be poor for digestions, but the results to date show that if you mix this with banana, this gives you the highest production of biogas. We need further detailed studies instead of doing the waste in parallel, but you put the same proportions that we, that we find the waste in at the end to see from an economic point of view, it's better to use all of the waste in proportion or to sort them and treat them separately. In the case of using bio-DME in a first approach, and here the results are highly provisional, but this could give us these quantities of bio-DME by island, we're talking about 550 tonnes a year in the best possible case, whereas in Tenerife we're talking about about 200 tonnes a year that we could produce from this waste. So that is agricultural waste. If we now look at recovering frying oil, as I said before, these are considered as part of solid urban waste, but it's quite difficult to quantify exactly how much waste is produced a year. What we've done is to conduct a study based on data provided by the different establishments you'll find in the island, such as, such as hotels, restaurants, and we've compared this against the amount of oil that's imported, imported vegetable oils, and we've been able to establish and a relationship between the two. So by looking at the import data, which are very simple that you can, so very simple to get, and from this we can make an estimate of how much oil waste is generated. Always on the ti in the timeline 2015, 2020. Here we have the distribution of this waste by islands. Obviously, the major islands are going to have more waste. We have 42% on Gran Canaria and approximately 39% on Tenerife. And the recovery of this oil on a large scale can own, could only be done on the two major islands, but this could be a simple process that could be used on the smaller islands too. On the timeline between now and 2020, here on Tenerife, we have about 11,000 tonnes, according to this estimate. The graph doesn't really show that the rest is 25,572. That would be the total amount of res uh, waste in the islands. And Tenerife would be approximately 30% of the total for the Canary Islands as a whole. This amount of oil could be used directly as an energy resource in baker's ovens, for instance, or the usual thing they do, the most classic thing, is to transterrification reaction with alcohol in a discontinuous process that has been well studied, but in the case of frying oils, it's more complicated, and that's the amount of oil, there are water contained in the oil, so it's a bit more complicated, but this will produce biodiesel. The biodiesel, with the performance from this reaction, could generate 8,300 tonnes a year of waste in Tenerife. From the data that we presented, which I've taken, they've been taken out of context for this speech, just to show you one possible use of um, harnessing this waste before dumping them. But it shouldn't be done individual, but rather collectively thinking, for instance, reco um, recovering energy from agricultural waste or wastewater sludge and moving towards the e circular economy using waste to feed other industries. So with the little time that we've had, we decided just to present preliminary data to bear in mind the magnitude of the, the output that could be got. What we've found is that we can use forestry biomass waste either as pellets or for pr obtaining cellulose, which would produce 86,000 tonnes a year, 
agricultural waste could produce in Tenerife about 9,500 tonnes a year of biogas or 240 tonnes of bio-DME. We could add to this the pruning waste from um, tomato plantations and vineyards, which would increase the production of halocellulase and frying oil we would have about 10,770 tonnes a year by 2020, which could produce about 8,000 tonnes a year of biodiesel and glycerin, which we mustn't forget, which is a subproduct as value added. Thank you very much.